Crypto Vibes Podcast, your weekly recap of news of what's happened in the world of crypto and Web3. It is week 38 of 2022. This is episode 28. I am your host, Neil Alonzo, and hope you've had a really good week. It's been interesting in the world of crypto and Web3. But before we dive into everything, we want to have to give you some disclosures. We are not financial advisors, wealth managers, lawyers, brokers, or CPAs. Nothing should be construed as investment advice. We aggregate news throughout the week to provide a condensed version. It's definitely not all the news for the week. And what didn't make the show is available on our website at cryptopodcast.xyz, complete with show notes. And to make it easier, you can subscribe to our newsletter so that you receive the shows directly in your email with all the show notes. Super convenient and just click to listen. This show is brought to you by Fort Brox, a crypto mining company. In this given time and week, crypto mining is definitely really interesting. But currently, we're quite optimistic about it. But that's probably because we've been around a while and seen a few highs and lows. Got to stay even keeled, right? To kick off the news this week, before we dive into all the regulation updates that had happened or just all the chatter and water cooler, is something a little interesting. How's Apple's App Store policies squeeze NFT startups? That's the headline from an information article. We're big fans of the information.com outlet. And our thoughts on this one, especially when it comes to Apple. Apple is obviously everything they've created with iTunes and the ecosystem that they've created for app developers and developers in general. I mean, there's antitrust suits. Epic Games definitely has their beef with Apple. And some of it we believe is valid. But Apple created that vertical. Now, here's the thing that we have to think about as it relates to NFTs. NFTs, if you're selling through a native app, do they really want to pay a commission to Apple for that? Now, That could be argued by Apple in a number of different ways. But regardless of where you stand on the antitrust side of things, our thought process is this. Apple could easily be the component that motivates enough developers and people as it relates to NFTs to now have something, a concerted group effort to not have to rely on their distribution and marketplace model. We're of the opinion if they don't play better or play nice, with this completely new environment, this completely new ecosystem, they could very well shoot themselves in the foot. And that is our two cents. In other headline news this week, Coinbase Cloud launches platform for Web3 developers. I know that sounds something very just like, oh, okay, cool. Well, what does that really do? Well, when you go to the link in our show notes and you check this out, and we already signed up for our developer access into it, They're creating a tech stack that you can really work with in SDKs and APIs. Now, for those who may not know of those things, it's a simpler way that they're creating their own tech stack that people can build upon. Look how powerful Salesforce got when they started letting people build on top of them. You could argue that Ethereum is as popular as it is today because people can build on top of it. Coinbase is positioning themselves to do something that would be very Google, Amazon, and even Stripe all in one piece. We definitely like this from the business approach. And now for a series of updates as it relates to all the headlines for regulation. Latest draft of US crypto law would temporarily ban terror like stable coins. This was a decrypt.co article, but this is in step during this week, Congress presses state department for info and cost benefit of crypto. This was a blockworks.co article. Another headline, White House releases, quote, comprehensive framework for crypto regulation and development. Okay. Another interesting headline, U.S. digital currency, a unanimous need to compete with China, House Committee says. And then another one, U.S. Treasury wants public to comment on crypto's role in illicit finance. We definitely think people should comment on crypto's role because as much as there is due diligence happening, and there's a lot of very intelligent people working on things, and we believe that regulation needs to happen, we're not necessarily sure that everybody is completely informed to make educated decisions. And if history has shown us anything, there's a lot of labels that people want to place on how you classify anything that has to do with new technology and innovation. Because there's not a lot of people who innovate that also write policy, I don't believe that they're fully equipped to make the best decisions. Having said that, It is the game we're all involved in, so we hope it works out for the best. 
In a blip of positivity, crypto stock rally as Fed raises rates by three quarter percent for the third straight month. Thank you for that. Another headline, Senator Toomey challenges Gensler's view that nearly, quote, all crypto tokens are securities. This is also <laughs> in suit with SEC claims all of Ethereum falls under U.S. jurisdiction. Okay. One of the big issues that we take is that everything that's trying to happen with regulation right now is they're trying to fit commodities and securities within the framework that's already existing. We are of the opinion because crypto and blockchain technology are an innovation and an evolution of how finance can take place, we need to figure out ways to classify it in new categories. We don't believe it can fit in the old way of doing business or in the old way things have been classified. For some reason, we want to make everything fit in what is already existing. But that doesn't seem logical, at least from our point of view. It isn't, to, but with innovation should come innovation with how it is regulated. And it seems like we're trying to pigeonhole it into something that's already existed for a long time. Speaking of old world, NASDAQ moves into crypto with custody services. Well, that shows big adoption right there. Coinbase is adding HBAR, Hedera, to their offering. It hasn't totally worked out as smooth as possible, but we have a link to a tweet that Coinbase posted about it. For those Flux fans out there, they've partnered up with Neo Exa, and they are currently compiling test images to bring proof of game functionality to servers hosted on the decentralized Web3 infrastructure that Flux has. Neo Exa was definitely high at one point in terms of profitability with GPU mining. Now, that's currently not the case, but it'll be interesting to see how this also evolves. In a cool article on blockworks.co, Binance's CZ believes in a decentralized future, which is an interesting point of view from an exchange. Kraken CEO Jesse Powell steps down. You can find all the details out in our show notes. Nova Labs Inc.'s agreement with T-Mobile to cover 5G dead spots in Helium Network. Helium Network has definitely had some interesting value propositions over, you know, since they've been in market. But... If they are able to do something like this, this would definitely add value to their whole proposition. In an article that caught our eye because we are from crypto mining, will new lending pool from crypto miners attract borrowers? This is a question mark on a blockworks.co article. They're trying to charge 15 to 20% for these lending options. Now, that just seems usurious, but why would you want to borrow against something when it's already a challenge to be profitable right now? People need to work out how PLs are actually ran. And FTX wants another $1 billion to buy more crypto companies, as per a report. And in previous CryptoVise podcasts, we said, Sam Bankman freed. It'll be interesting to see how everything turns out 10 years from now. Because are you able to retroactively go back to the deals he's made during this bear market and say, oh, these are antitrust suits because you built too much of a monopoly? What? Nobody else seems to be doing it quite as powerful or as aggressive as he is. So hopefully he doesn't get penalized in the future for the decisions he makes today. But then again, he'd probably have quite a bit of resources if everything turned out very profitable. And our last bit of news for this week. Again, it's not all the news, but it's just what we've shown on this podcast. Spotify starts selling audiobooks in the U.S. with catalog of 300 plus titles. Now, we think this is a big deal because of a lot of reasons. In a podcast that we're working on right now, talking about discovery engines, you'll see more why. So that's just alluding to it, if you will. Again, that's not all the news for this week. You can find links to everything we talked about, plus more, at CryptoPodcast.xyz. We want to thank Good Soup Music for that intro and outro song. We love those people. This show is produced by Vocal Visual and Wizard Cats. We drop a new episode every Saturday. It just depends on what time and how the market's been and how how task-oriented our week was. I am your host, Neil Alonzo, and we are cautiously optimistic and hopefully pessimistic on crypto. Have a great weekend. <laughs>